Okay guys, today we are working on the Pulsar G450RN Silent Series Generator, Inverter Generator, available on Amazon or eBay. Didn't have too many reviews out there, or any that I saw, so I thought I'd do one of my own. You may have seen my other ones that are um, not too good, because they are my first ones, and I've had this a bit, so um, bear with me. kind of still learning. I've already done its break-in period, which I ran it for roughly 30 hours and uh, put a load on it on and off, on and off. Just um, never haven't put a full load on it yet, and I'll probably do that here today. But this is what the front end looks like. It's got the um, RV plug right there, which I definitely like. A couple of regular plugs there, which both have their little brake breakers here main breaker plug and plug breaker would have liked to have seen four of these on here but hey, anything's good we got a usb port right there a 12 volt um, cigarette lighter adapter right there your parallel units which are sold separately um economy mode on off uh, push to start battery turn it on and off fuel on and off which i already have it on and this little plug right here, that guy, uh, that charges the battery, which is encased right here in the side. It almost looks like a drill battery that you remove. I'll pull off this panel here in a second. Uh, this right here, nice plus, is the remote start. Um, I'll show you how that works here in just a second. But I think I walked around this guy, showed you everything. Nice wheels, the uh, exhaust is right there spark arrestor in there in case you, you know on those campsites where it's kind of necessary this right here I, is probably its best feature handle that comes right out used it a few times already oops excuse me there hitting my tools um, lift it right up no struggle there move it back and forth roll it easy when you're done push the button pop it in stays out of the way I've, like I said, I've already run the generator through its break-in period. Once again, 4,500 watts peak, 3,700 watts rated. And uh, I'm going to change the oil on it. The oil access point is right here on the side. Uh, right there. Pop that off real quick. It's got a nice little access port to put the socket through. And let's see, let me find my flashlight. Right there. I don't know if you can see that. That one screw right there. That's your drain. In case you guys are familiar with the Predator uh, generators, it's very similar to that. There's your little, let's see if we get that, your fill port right there. And down there at the bottom, which is kind of hard to see. If you can't get over them, um, right down there is the um, the drain. Just pop that out and it drains right through. As y'all can see, I've got some uh, oil down there that's from draining it once already and refilling it. So now I'm going to do this uh, best I can with one hand. So just uh, give me a second here while I set up. All right, we're back in there. As you can see, there's some oil already coming out. I've removed the drain there. I don't know if you can see that light down there. That's the opening. I did notice one thing when it um, when you first take this lid off. It, I have it tilted to the side and over this drain, so it drains in into the pan. Usually, I put a frisbee down there and underneath it, and it catches it straight away. So it may just be the way I'm doing it. But the Predator generator, which I'm kind of comparing this thing to because I had it before, is the um, the drain was a lot easier, a lot cleaner. As you can see, there's definitely oil down there in places where it shouldn't be. But like I said, it could be just the way I'm draining it at an angle. Just because I have such a big uh, pan here. I don't know where my little Frisbee went because that held it pretty well. And okay, here we go. I 
I pulled off the uh, the fill area, which is right there. As you can see, the oil looks pretty good. Like I said, this is my second time changing it. And I'm about to uh, pull the plug on the, um, on the actual drain, which is right there. I won't be able to do this with two hand or with one hand because I got to actually use a socket to see what I'm doing. But I'll show you once I actually get to that point. All right, I've got it on there. And got my little impact driver on there, as you can see, it's right there. I'm gonna remove it, and uh, we'll try to get back to showing you how the drain, how the oil flows out as quick as possible without making a huge mess. So uh, let me take this off and I will show how it goes. All right, there we go. See how it flows out, kind of hits all the other stuff that I don't think it should, but like I said, I do have it on an angle, so it's um, coming out. Um, the way it's supposed to down there through that hole hasn't come out anywhere else that I've seen. But I do, um, see this guy here, there's no magnet on there, so I'm going to try to find a magnetic uh, drain plug to catch any particles that may be on there. But when I changed it the first time, I didn't notice any um, metal shavings in it, which was very surprising considering it was on the break-in period. But I saw nothing wrong with it, so I'll check this stuff out here and see if there's anything different, but I don't expect to find anything um, of any significance in there. But back to the drain. It is already drained all out. I can put that plug back in, which I will... I don't know if I showed you good enough. Um... Kind of hard to see if you can see that hole right there. That is the hole where the um, oil comes out. All right, well, let me put it back in and I will start to fill this guy back up. All right, back on this. Got the fuel or the fill um, funnel back in there. And as you can see, it's in the place where the little cap was, which is this guy right here. And so I got the oil. It's not the Pulsar brand. This is a uh, Valvoline full synthetic. I use this on the second and uh, third. Well, this will be the third fill. Uh, so this will be the final one to actually take it out, hook it up to the RV and do everything on that. Um, so far I've run my shop vac with it. I have run my grinders. Yeah, there it goes. Grinders. And a couple of battery chargers on it. So it's been, you know, on and off, not too bad. But either way, I'm going to pour this um, oil in here. Like I said, it's Valvoline 1030 full synthetic. And it's, uh, I just put it in this cup because I have a two and a half gallon jug of it. So this makes it a lot easier to fill up. And I know it only holds exactly what is in here. All right, we're all filled up. Cap is back in. Going to go over here, turn her on. Let's see if this battery is charged up real good. And here it goes, push start. She is on and running. See if it got any quieter just after it's break in here. Uh, well, as you can see right in front of the unit, I'm at about 88 decibels. Directly in back of the unit, 97, 98 decibels. Very tolerable, especially if you can still hear me talking over this thing. Um, well, from here to there, roughly seven, eight feet. Seventy-nine decibels. Very tolerable, not hard to talk over. I can definitely have a conversation over this thing right when I'm 
right on top of this. So, not bad. I'm not sure exactly how much quieter it got, but it's definitely quiet. Just so you can hear this thing rev up a bit. I'm going to hook up my vacuum or shop back to it. I'll do, use a little cleanup anyway. And I uh, will plug her in. Now I know for a fact it's going to rev up a bit once I do it, but it'll settle back down to roughly about the same spot. There. I am still going in vacuum and it has no issues with that. It's a little bit louder. I am still vacuuming. I really think the vacuum is actually louder than the generator. But anyway, I'm right on top of it. It's still a little bit hard to hear me maybe on the video, but I have both running. Now I'm going to turn off the vacuum, see if you can tell the difference in the generator if it shuts off. No difference on that. And this is on regular mode. Turn it on to economy. It definitely got quieter. Seventy-eight, and this is eighty-five here. Seven, eight feet away, it doesn't even pick it up. Oh, there it goes. Oh, nope, that's my voice. There you go. 75 decibels. I'd say it's roughly seven feet away. So definitely no issues with having a conversation or using it at your campsite, especially if it's running at night. Maybe with a load on it, it get a little bit louder, but I seriously doubt if you have any, anybody uh, complaining about it. Once again, this is the Pulsar G450RN, 3700 watts rated, 4500 peak, and it is available on Amazon and eBay, fairly reasonable price. I got me a real good deal on this because I bought it at a certain time when it was a tax holiday for it. Give me while I mess with this camera because I'm still learning all the ins and outs of this stuff. There probably won't be any editing, but uh, it's only my second video or third video, so give me a break. <laughs> I'm just a simple guy trying to help out other people find a new product that may help them out and uh, make their camping or homesteading, maybe just working out the yard, you got some acreage or something, need power way out there, you don't have a cord, this may be an alternative. This one here is from my RV, I do have the uh, a much louder Predator uh, for the land and whatever I have out here, because I got a couple of acres out here I got to get electricity to and I'm not all the way out there, so when I need my jackhammer or whatever else I need out there and I need electricity, I go to that guy. But once again, thank you and I hope this helped you out in some, you know, any way possible. You guys have a great day.